Okay. Um, so for this, the first talk of this afternoon is done by Giorgio and Andrea, uh, two Python web developers interested in test driving development, and will be about Mocket, a socket mock framework. Thank you. Hi everybody. So the title of the talk is Socket Mock Framework, Moquette. But uh, only because we had no money to, to pay the royalty to the Wachowski brother. Because the real title is I know Kung Fu, show me. But it's mainly, um, I'm Giorgio, sorry, and it's Andrea. We both um, we play at home today because we both live and work at Florence. So um, as became developer for Buongiorno, uh, NTT Docomo company. So in, we work for different team, but we we do practice the same job. So today it's about agile. Agile it's the new black. It's fashion. Everybody wants to be agile, but the um, uh, but the real Agile Manifesto was written by um, developers, for developers. So it, it starts every morning um, with the 10 minutes stand-up meeting, but it has to continue all the day for at least eight hours with the TDD. So it's about test. So a developer more influent than us wrote that uh, code without test is broken by design. Do you know Jacob? Okay, Jacob is <laughs> is uh, one of the author of uh, co-author of Django. So he said. So the the question is, do we really want broken code in production? So the the resp the, the reply is all. Oh, always is of course no we don't so the the point is coverage so we want to have a good coverage a full coverage so it's about test we need to write some test so this is the um, first example of test in uh, Django uh, testing um, uh, documentation so it's quite simple to read and it seem, seems obviously that writing test is easy. But um, real software, it's complex. So, uh, so, we, um, so if you think that writing test is easy, we think you are wrong. S because um, this kind of test is the blue pill for us, but what we want is the red pill. So let's go back to a few months ago. We were in the need of some mocks, mainly for Redis and for um, HTTP. So we we went on internet and we first we found. Um, um, Redis, uh, mock Redis Pi, and we installed it, and you, well, you, it was working properly. It's very easy to use because um, there is the decorator patch that it, it comes from the um, mock module, um, uh, the Python mock module. So it mocks the Redis client with the fake one, um, and then you uh, you execute the the, ready, the test function. And inside the test function, the, the mock, um, uh, instead of the real client, it runs and it's OK. Very simple. Very simple, but the mock has to contain all the, f has to provide all the functionality that you, that you used in your software. So if you, if you miss, if it miss, it misses some, some feature, you have to implement it. So, and that's what uh, we did. We, um, 
we make me we made some pull requests and we added um, some commands uh, it was missing and that's it at the point uh, at some point the um, redis author antire uh, salvatore san filippo um, he, he always add feature to redis it's like a, like a mad so he he had some feature and after few weeks the um, the real client um, had they implemented the new functionalities in the real uh, client, but the mock one was still missing all these commands. So, so we realized that we that we had to maintain our code. Maybe the 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 real client uh, code, and it's okay, it's okay. But we had also to maintain the mock code. That is not so good. So, okay. Redis, it's a, for, for now it's okay. So, about a, HTTP. About HTTP, we found this, um, this mock, HTTP Pretty. HTTP Pretty is a uh, different approach that we loved. And the approach is, um, you decorate your test function, uh, it mocks the socket, so when you run tests, the client you are using for testing your application, it's the real client you use in production, it's a, your real code, and so it, everything is fine. You are happy, if, uh, if your client has good new functionality, you have in your test, and you can test also the, the, the new functionality, and you are happy. So the approach is, for what we think, it's the, the best one. So, the main problem is that uh, it's only for HTTP and HTTPS. So, uh, so if you want to have, let's say, a Redis, uh, a Redis mock, you need to implement it with the same approach. So you need to mock the socket, you need, and again and again, if you need some other mocks that use the same, uh, the same socket, the, the, the socket. So what, what we realized, again, it was that we were not looking for mocks, but we were looking for a socket mock framework, and we developed it, and, um, and uh, that's it. Um, <laughs> now no. I, I did the good part. Now uh, I, le I leave uh, Andrea the, the worst part of the talk. No, no, uh, of course it's not a déjà vu. Thank you, Giorgio, to let me the boring side of the talk. We spoke about Agile, GitHub, open source, and I will speak about protocols. No good. Anyway, this is the first gray slide. Are you familiar with the scheme? Yeah, I can skip. I have to remember some of how the socket works. Okay, let's talk about uh, the main idea of the mocking sock. When the client uh, make the connection, we try to intercept uh, this command, and uh, every request uh, that the client performs to the uh, through the server. But we want to prevent. Uh, to use the true socket. So we need uh, some uh, trick to route the, the real call. The, let's start so with some code. I can go on. Any question about socket? Okay. This is the core of the application. It's the market socket and it's the oracle because uh, he, uh, she will, she send every, uh, she intercept every request and uh, decide if we need to use the mock or the or the real socket. The class that it prevents the mock at itself, so it's this one. You could see the red fake and all, and the blue real and all, and. Uh, the fix and all only collect the request and write the response. If, uh, if, the, if the 
the mock at decided that this is a request for the mock. After this, we have the keymaker. The keymaker is mockette and is the router. It accepts uh, registration for a fake request. It provides responses to the mockette socket, the previous class. And then uh, he, it collects the request, performed in the fake mode. When, instead, when you use the true send all, we restart the protocol. So we restart with the true socket connect, the true socket send all, the true socket receive, and the true socket close. So you can bypass the protocol, uh, writing directly and read with the client, or you can choose to restart the connection and send or send the real call. At this point, the core is ready, but we are in love with decorator and uh, context manager, so we want to provide an interface as simple as possible. And this is the architect, is Mocketizer, and is the context manager of the, of the, pro, uh, the main uh, context manager of the project. And uh, it has a, a, <coughs> also a decorator, is Mocketizer Wrap. And uh, simply when you enter in this context manager, uh, someone, if I speak about context manager and decorator, we follow you understand the, it? OK. So when you enter in uh, the context manager, uh, Mocketizer enable the, uh, the okay. moquette. And when exit, disable and reset it. So back into the title. This is the uh, uh, protocol toy for the first basic idea to implement the free basic idea. And uh, Neo is uh, the client. And he can say only, I know the Kung Fu. And Morpheus uh, can receive this, uh, I know the Kung Fu, and can reply, show me if some uh, other uh, string uh, enter in, the, in Morpheus server, he, reply, he replies, blue pill. Now, so we have, we have to test Neo. And we have two main problems. The first two main problems. The first one is how can I do if, I, uh, if Morpheus is uh, not reachable from a, a development environment or if uh, uh, Morpheus is not in yet implemented, uh, other, uh, other situation when uh, Morpheus is not available. The second one is uh, how can we test the, uh, the false return in the client method? Because in this case, we have, uh, of course it's a fake, but we have, uh, we, can, uh, we can't uh, never receive uh, something different that uh, show me. So right, you follow me? Question? No? Okay. So this is the protocol. It's very simple. <laughs> um, so the, our answer is this one. Simply pip install moquette and uh, the, the free test case is upon the real socket. We, decor we, we are decorating the test OK, but we are not registering anything to Moquette. So um, we instantiate Neo. We assert true that, uh, the, that Neo said, I know, and Orpheus replies, uh, show me. And, that, and then we, we assert that uh, Moquette uh, does not receive any request. 
So we know that we are going on uh, through the true socket. The other test case which you test is the mocket in action. In the, the freeze test, we are uh, also wrap the, uh, the test with uh, mocketizer wrap. Uh, but in this case, we are registering a mocket entry with an address and a reply, a response inside the mocket. So when we call Neo I know, we are calling the fake Sandol and intercepting it, we can uh, assert that Moquette received a, quest, a, a request. In the second case, we pass blue pill. So it, it's something that probably Morpheus uh, will never do, but to test the, the other case, in this, in this way we can. Uh, also here, we instantiate Neo, then we assert that Neo I know is false. And also in this case, we assert that uh, Moquette received one request. Okay, uh, that's the, the very basic idea of Moquette, but uh, we uh, implement also <coughs> two plugin, that it's uh, HTTP and Redis, because uh, at the beginning we need uh, these two plugins, and uh, try to to abstract more uh, the low level of Moquette. So, for example, in, uh, in a H get all of Redis, uh, you can pass a dictionary as a response and the, the plugin uh, try to transform the dictionary into the Redis string, protocol. the Redis uh, protocol. And... Uh, In, in the HTTP, uh, we left something like, for example, HTTPS, uh, regexp on the URL, uh, registering uh, of, uh, of multiple, re or multiple uh, response for the same request. Anyway, uh, if uh, someone uh, wants to help us, uh, it's welcome. And uh, this is our first time, so we run very fast, and uh, we hope you have a lot of questions. <laughs> So the good point for us is that you, um, we, um, that you are not forced to implement a protocol, but you, you can use directly Moquette as, uh, as it is, so, um, as we did in, uh, in this example. So if you have some question, um, Thank you. Uh, if I understood correctly, uh, if we don't register um, a mock, the f true socket will be used? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes. So it means we can, uh, inside our test, test yeah, several connections and this is only... Uh, this is good because uh, maybe I want to mock only, let's say, a Google API, but I'm using, of course, HTTP for other calls. So I register just my URL, the URLs I, I, I'll call on Google, on the Google APIs, and I still serving the real answer to the, uh, via HTTP to all the other calls I need. Yeah, so the basically you are passing host and port when you register an, an, um, a, a, an entry. So uh, the true socket, so in the get entry, so when you call get entry, you have an entry all, only if you have uh, registered that location. Location is the, the tuple uh, host and port. Hi. Um, is it possible to test um, ugly cases where, where there is no response? For example, you, you want to mock what happens when the connection is refused immediately or if the server creates a timeout, if I want to test that my client acts nicely with a timeout. I think about that this morning, <laughs> because uh, we released the, the beta of Moquette uh, 
this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it, it's, it's, pretty, it's quite pretty simple because uh, uh, when you use uh, just, uh, you can raise uh, in uh, entry.getResponse an exception. So when you register an, a response, you have, to pass, you have to pass, for example, the class of the exception. In this case, we... Uh, okay, in this case, we pass a string as a fake response. If you pass a, a, an a subclass of exception, you can raise the, the exception, for example, connection error or... Uh, timeout. Or timeout. And uh, it fakes the, erase the, the exception. It's, uh, it's the, the right answer? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, hi. Um, I actually don't like the fact that you're using true send all. HTTP does the same thing, and it's a problem uh, when you didn't register the endpoint and everything breaks. Uh, so could it be possible that you can actually have a configuration option if uh, it's not registered that uh, some kind of uh, callable instead of uh, true send all? Uh, at the moment, no. But it's not so difficult. I, for example, in Redis and, uh, and HTTP, I, I use, uh, using uh, PyTest, I skip if uh, something, if, uh, if I don't have the real uh, Redis or the real HTTP. So extend the, that, the, that decorator. I think it's not so difficult. Uh, because it's basically skip that uh, if not entry. You don't want call the true sock, true call, okay? And anyway, you can check if you call the true socket in this way, because mocket request is equal to zero. Oh uh, so yeah. You can what what I what I would actually like uh, <laughs> at that point where you have if not entry, uh, just to like uh, check if there's a default. Uh, if, if I could just do like mocket register default. Ah okay. And to uh, if not entry that but it is uh, a default, use that callable, because uh, a situation I had recently, I did the API, and the other guy did testing, and uh, he actually, uh, when he started using HTTP, and uh, he didn't register some API endpoint, uh, everything just blew up. Uh, and okay. if, if you can so enable some default action, you can like, okay, you need to register this uh, uh, URL or something. So, uh, for example, in this case, we can say that uh, the true send all is, is our default, and uh, you can have the possibility to extend that. Good point. Feel free to or open issue on GitHub, and also pull, make a pull request uh, if, you, if you know how to solve some problem. Okay. We, are, we are open source fanatics, so help us. Thank you. Uh, just a um, question. Um, yesterday, a guy pointed me to, towards a library called uh, Cassette, which acts as a tape recorder to mock, um, I think that one is just for HTTP requests. Uh, would you consider uh, adding a feature like that to, to um, make easier the, um, the process of creating the first test? Because uh, simulating a whole socket session could be a long and tedious process. Using uh, an approach like that, you can have um, your library in the middle. Get the real answer from a socket just once, save it in a fixture, and then use it for the test the subsequent times. Yes, this is the, 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 the basic idea uh, to refactoring the entire code and make a uh, bright mocketizer. Uh -huh. Because uh, having the enter and exit, I can uh, tune this for a register some call. Because I, for example, I read an issue on HTTP pretty, and uh, in that case, they want the, say, the, the same feature to register the first call because 
Uh, I know that it's not so simple to take the, the real first call. Uh, for example, in uh, Redis. Uh, yeah, the protocol was, uh, of course, uh, not so clear. So to, to write the, um, yeah. the Redis mock, we, we had to study the protocol because you are mocking the server and not, not the client. So you have to speak the server language. Okay. Thank you. Hi. Um, I'm just wondering if it would be possible to have uh, different things returned based on the request params, like data that gets sent down the socket, and then you get the reply. Is there support for that kind of thing? So say, like, you were sending uh, data down, like, a JSON request or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's uh, go with GitHub. So I, I can show you the, the HTTP plugin, so you yeah. can see. Uh, 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 no, uh, on the test of the HTTP. Back. Go down, go down. Of course, it's full, uh, full, um, full covered. In this case, we register testme.org mm -hmm. on the AT port and uh, only for that request. So for that path, yep. we reply uh, A and Euro with the content application JSON. So if you register something else, you can handle the, the, the URL path. Because this is a feature of XM, uh, HTTP. Uh, and uh, can you do things like have regexes for uh, for those params? Like, so say anything with a, a is equal to whatever, um, a is equal to star or whatever. Return, return this and it's something like a regex. Yeah. As a new feature. <laughs> Not yet. Is the is the is the in the backlog. Cool. Cheers. And you also you can is a list of response. So you can give to the you can the, you can uh, give the to the method a list of response. So the first time you call that URL, you receive the first response. And then you receive the other one. In the first case, uh, URL open uh, raises HTTP error. In the other cases, we have a, a 200. Uh, Another question? It's quite flexible in, in this case. Hi. Uh, does it work with Python 3? Uh, Not yet. <laughs> no. <laughs> My it's, fault. It's in the backlog as well. <laughs> Because uh, I start from a, like a fork of HTTP and uh, it doesn't support, did, didn't support, because now it supports. Okay, we'll do as soon as possible. But it's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the main goal uh, of the next month. <laughs> Probably the, the, the 1.0 will have uh, Python 3. Uh, as far as I understood, um, it seems that your uh, market framework does not contain any uh, way to assert the number of calls you made on the market module. Is that true? 
No. no. Uh, if you see in, uh, in tests, we, s we always test moquette requests equal something. And I, this three is the number of replies that served moquette instead of the real socket. We are studying the interface. I is it what you... For that, for, for that reason, that's the, the underscore. Okay, so so you now handle these cases during sort of black magic, right? Yeah. And you s supposed to integrate such interface or yeah. not? Yes. Yes. Uh, just another one. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have many times. <laughs> I assume so. Um, um, it's about the mechanism you implemented to to assert the different behavior you, you're mocking. And um, it seems that you are, um, you implemented a sort of uh, check and verify um, mechanism. Is that right? No, it's quite, quite right. Okay, so it, it's not, um, I'm trying to, to make uh, a sort of comparison with a mocking framework already available in Java, for instance, where there are two different families of mocking uh, the easy mock style and the jmock one. So easy mock as a sort of check and replay verification and jmock as a sort of DSL. So this a sort of uh, uh, specific language you may use a yes. specific instruction to, to write the behavior verification. The um, what about your framework? Uh, at this moment you have to register uh, the requ the the couple uh, uh, request responses one by one. But uh, we are thinking to, for example, give to the register the, a, a, a JSON with this couple to register the entire behavior of, of, the, of the framework to avoid to register in every test the, that command, uh, that request or command bind to the responses. Okay. Okay. Got it? Okay. So, uh, as far as I understand, you, you register the... Microphone, oh, please. As far as I understand, you're registering the uh, method and the expected value. Yeah. Okay. It, um, um, if you have more requests on the same, um, on the same URL, let's say, or command, depends on which, what are you mocking. Um, it serves always the last response. If you, let's say, I want a 500, uh, 302, and a couple of 200. So I, regi I register um, 500, 302, and one 200, and I, sti and I continue to serve the, the last one. So you don't have to register every call you need but you, you prepare some errors and after the good response, and you use the good response for all the testing. Uh, you are registering for the uh, get method. Uh, can you also register like uh, two get methods and a post method and it will uh, be executed in that order? Yeah. Yes, there are, yeah. Other questions? For example, in Redis, it's totally different, the registration. Because we, have, we don't have uh, get and the URL, but only the command. We, we, can, we, we show you some Redis tests, so you can imagine. You can understand what, what is going. I like emoticons. <laughs> no? So we have two classes in this uh, file. The first class is testing the real, yeah, let's say, no moquette eyes. It uh, is the real socket. And the, it ends up with the second uh, that is, it tests uh, the, um, the fake one. But of course, uh, uh, let's say, if um, we also tested the snow snowman uh, in Unicode. So, <laughs> um, if you see, um, we all um, to of course we were not crazy. We we don't um, uh, we provide a way to um, to register good responses. Let's say good for humans, but 
in the in the um, under the hood, the, um, the, the um, under the hood, the um, the real uh, res uh, response is coming out is this one. This uh, this is the command, and so so it's very simple to to register also the um, the, the register uh, response because uh, we we let you to register um, re responses uh, as you as uh, you receive from the Redis client, know the real protocol uh, of the Redis. I don't know if someone uh, knows how uh, a dictionary is a written string in, uh, in Redis. Someone? No one? Okay. i show you. If you pass a dictionary to Moquette, we have also a unit test for this. We transform it in... Go down. If you see, we have some function uh, in the um, Mocket Redis uh, for, um, for Redis, um, let's say, to convert string in Redis and Python object in Redis commands, in Redis responses uh, and commands. And this is a dictionary for Redis. Two nights ago was the. <laughs> <laughs> we we uh, the this is uh, <laughs> two, two days uh, old. This <laughs> this file. Okay. Again, uh, question. No. Um, okay. You have two, nine minutes to to smoke to <laughs> to go down. We finished. Okay. Thank you.